Hello again. We're going to explore a few more features of Acme and some features of the environment that augment Acme. The first thing I want to show you is this command up here called Xerox. If you click, if you execute Xerox with your middle button after selecting a window, it makes a duplicate of that window, and both instances of that window are kept in sync. So this is really useful if you want to do some work in a file while cross-referencing another part of the file. I also want to show you some things about using RC within the Acme environment by using Win. Now this is just a normal shell environment here. And one of the complaints that people often bring up about RC is that it doesn't have command line completion and it doesn't have command line history. And I want to show you that the environment provides both of these for you. The first I want to show you is completion. If you wanted to look at a file called libconstitution, you wouldn't have to type out the whole file. You could type in part of the file and then hit Control F and it'll do the completion for you. Or alternately, if you don't want to hit Control F, you can use the insert key as well. This is a good time to mention that the delete key is also used um, to interrupt whatever you're executing. So it's sort of like Control C in other environments. Next, I want to talk about history. Um, when you execute commands that aren't built in Acme commands, in the win environment, it simulates you typing in that command and hitting enter. So for example, if I right click and select LC and release, it will actually type in LC and enter at the prompt and complete that. And that's actually very useful when you want to form partial command lines. For example, if I created a new file and I wanted to see what was in that new file later, if that new file name was still on the screen, I could just type cat and then middle click on new file and it'll actually type in new file for me. So you don't you can use it to complete the commands that you've already started. Now th this is pretty useful when the commands are still on your screen. But once the command scrolls off your screen it's actually a bit harder to use this kind of history. You might actually have to do a search to look for the instances of cat or readme or something like that and or scrolling through the file looking for your last instances of your command which can be a pain. So I'm going to show you a little bit later that there's other ways that you can augment this history mechanism uh, to make it a little bit simpler. Next I want to tell you about the source command, SRC. This command will pull up the sources for various commands um, in the Plan 9 environment. So for example, if you wanted to find more about LS, you can type source LS and it will actually pull up the source for LS um, at the place where the execution begins, here at main. So you can pretty quickly explore how Plan 9 is built by using this command. And it's not just useful for binaries, you can also pull up sources for other things like LC is a shell script, and you can see here this is the implementation of LC. Another very useful feature is um, you can use um, Acme in conjunction with the output of other commands. When you run grep-n on a file, um, it prints its results with the file name and the line number that the match was made at and if you click on this with the leftmost button it'll actually pull up the file at that exact line number and in general whenever you have a file name colon a line number it'll pull up at that address and you can actually use more complicated addresses here too for example if I wanted to pull up lines 41 through 50 I can click on that and it'll highlight lines 41 through 50. And you can do that directly in the file as well. For example, if I wanted to highlight line 50, I would just do colon 50 and click on that because the file name is already implicit here. And you can use other kinds of patterns as well. For example, you can use regular expressions here and click on that and it'll actually do a search for GenRand from the point where you already have the document open. So let's uh, make a small change to our sources here. And the first thing I want to do is find out where in the sources main execution starts. So I'm going to use grep-n to find where main starts. Uh, excuse me, I forgot to put the pattern here. And so I use my history mechanism to add the pattern to the line I botched earlier. And I can see that main starts at line 77. So I jump to that file and I want to add an extra command here. print 
hello there and save that and now I want to rebuild my kernel the command I use to rebuild my kernel is this instance of make and instead of typing that into my command uh, command line directly I'm actually going to put it in my tag because I'm going to anticipate using this more than once and I'm going to leave it highlighted so all I have to do to execute this whole command is just middle click on this highlighted portion here and so that just fired off a, a build and you see right away that I had an error here that line 88 is complaining that there was a new line in the string and sure enough it looks like I've forgotten to put a quote here and so let's fix that up you notice that all I had to do to edit that file was click on the error message because it had a colon and a line number there. So now that things are fixed up, I want to rerun my make and I just middle click on this again. And I got another error here. And it looks like I put an extra parentheses in. So let's fix that up and run make again. And this time it looks like things are going smoothly in building my kernel. So I'm going to hit delete and interrupt that because I, I'm done explaining this part here. And I want to show you a few other commands that are really useful. And I'm going to open up another window to do that. Uh, one thing that's really nice about the Acme environment, it's really easy to open a new window, use it for a few seconds, and then delete it. So you should definitely take advantage of that. Um, the scripts that I want to show you are online, on the internet, in the sources repository. To access them, you just run linefs sources and then cd to the directory n sources contrib rsc scripts and in this directory there's a number of scripts that Russ has written and in particular I want to talk about quote 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 and g and the first thing I want to do is copy these into my own copy of my my, my binaries uh, directory so I'm going to copy them to home slash bin slash rc and it turns out that this directory is actually mounted onto bin so now I should have those files in my bin directory so I can get rid of this directory I've done what I wanted here and let me t tell you about these uh, three commands that I've copied the first one is g and this is a variation of grep n which simplifies some of the work for you. You don't have to type in the file name. It'll implicitly grab all the files in the current directory. Uh, so all you have to do is type in G and then the pattern. If you wanted to type in a file name, you could actually do that as well. And it'll restrict itself to just those files in that instance. And once we do the grep, we can actually click on things to make changes if we wanted to. For example, if I wanted to see where my changes were in main I can grep them and then instantly click to get there and then undo my changes so that my sources are back to what they were previously the next command I want to show you is this quote command and the quote command will search through your history to find all of the instances where you run the particular command so for example if I want to find all the LCs I've run recently I wrote quote LC and it'll tell me that I've run LC a number of times without any arguments and it also I've run it with slash bin as an argument at this point if I wanted to rerun that command I could just select it with my middle button as I normally would use history so this is kind of a history grep if you know in a particular instance that you wanted to rerun the command the variation of the command that you ran most recently you could just use the double quote and that'll actually do the grep and then execute it so here it's run the most recent instance of LC or if I wanted to rerun make at this point I could just do quote make and then highlight it or quote quote make and it would rerun that last make I had done 